It's probably been a little bit over a month since the last update that we got from Autogen, but we finally got one and there's a lot to it. Okay, so this is version 0.2.28. And as you can see, there are a lot of changes in this update. We're not gonna go over exactly all of these, but we'll go over the highlights. All right, so for the first update, we have the GPT Assistant Agent, which is an agent backed by OpenAI's Assistant API. And we can use multiple tools such as the Code Interpreter, the file search and function calling. And what those are, are built-in tools from OpenAI. And whenever you use this assistant, then you also get benefits from what they call threads, which automatically store message history and adjust based on the model's context length. And we can also have agents generate files such as images and spreadsheets. And if you wanna come visit this page, you know they have examples of function call, a code interpreter, and a group chat with the GPT assistant agent that you can look at. Uh, but this is pretty simple to set it up. You're just going to create a GPT assistant agent. And the only other thing here that looks a little different is, you know, we have the instructions. You still have the name, the LLM config, but also the assistant config. Okay. And they have that right here. It's not really defined yet, but when we scroll down, there's going to be different ways you can define this. And it's going to kind of be added to the GPT assistant agent so that you can define what tools or built in functionality you want this assistant to have. For instance, they have the assistant config here to be a code interpreter here. You set up to have file search. And so another example for function calling is you define a function because this is get current weather. And then you have an API schema, which you use this function, get function schema, give it the actual function you want to use the name and a description. And then in the assistant config uh, for the tools, you just say, Hey, I want this API schema to be the function for the assistant agent. And for this next one, I thought this was pretty interesting. This is resuming a group chat. And it may be kind of how you're thinking right now is whenever you end a group chat, normally we set a variable, which I'll show you in just a minute, whenever you set that variable and you terminate the chat, so you're done. Well, whenever you want to uh, have that chat again, you can take that group chat that you had, you can basically get the last messages and then resume it with another group chat. Let's just, let's kind of see how they define that here and how it works. But like I said, we can resume a previous group chat by passing the messages from that conversation to the group chat manager's resume function. So there's a different, they've added a function to the group chat manager. So the resume function returns the last agent in the messages as well as the last message itself. These can be used to run the initiate chat. The messages passed into the resume function can be in a JSON string or a list of dictionary messages. So here is what we, here's what we want to see an example of how to actually continue a terminated conversation. So let's look at this example, right? So we had the basic setup for Autogen and then we create the group chat objects. One thing to note here is it says they should have the same name as the original group chat. I'll probably come out with an example of, uh, as I explore this a little bit more, but so they have the typical agents here, right? There's nothing, nothing crazy here. Um, they have about five or five of them. So here we had the group chat, right? We had the agents, you know, this, if you've done group chats before, this is nothing really new. And then we had the manager. So you say algen group chat manager, give it the group chat and the LLM config. Okay. This is really nothing new so far that we've done. Okay. But now we want to load previous messages from a JSON string or messages or like a list of, uh, dictionary. And so what I think they've done is they've used the two methods that we uh, saw above. They just probably went ahead and did that. And then this is this whole line here. All right, so I basically just put that in a quick formatter. So the initial message was to find the latest paper um, on archive, GPT-4 on archive and its uh, potential applications. And then um, basically this right here is all of the conversations of all of the agents in the group chat um the user said agree and then the planner said great let's proceed okay so then the, i think they terminated the they probably terminated the chat there and so now when we come back how they set this up is you say last agent so it looks like manager.resume gives back uh it gives back two different it returns two different um variables so with last agent and last message okay and you give it you say manager which was the group chat manager up here, you say dot resume messages equals previous state. So this is the, here it's a JSON string. Okay. And then we can say result equals last agent dot initiate chat. So probably the last agent that was part of that chat, we're going to initiate the chat from there. And as you can see here, it says great. The planner that was the last one we just saw, right? So the planner 
we come back here the the name was the planner great let's proceed with the plan outlined earlier and we come back that's exactly what this is so this is this previous state is where we ended or terminated the chat and now we're just simply resuming it from here and then they continue the engineer uh creates some code we come down some more you know and then now all the agents are just continuing this chat right so we go on uh we go on and on and you know we have uh, we have the output so it looks like that was if you just maybe close the chat yourself because they have a, also have an example of whenever you uh resume a terminated group chat okay so this is basically whenever uh at the end you know and one of the agents says okay terminate the user says okay and then it cuts out the conversation like we're done and what this and what this is doing right now um it, they're saying that when they go ahead and say initiate the chat again with the last message here right so they resume from the previous state um it, it, this warning is saying the last message from that previous group chat meets a termination criteria meaning there was a termination uh, like uh, the string was there then this is what we get right so thank you um so the last message was from the digital marketer to the chat manager it says blah blah you know whatever they did and I'm, I'm assuming if we go all the way to the end here yep right there's a terminate so that's done and then this time they're going to remove that message by using the remove termination string parameter and then resume. So the same major.resume, except now they have this. Okay. And then uh, after the, the digital marketer says the same thing, and there is a term in there's all the way to the end. Oh, see, it removed it, right? So this time, instead of, you know, this is the same text as up here, but they got rid of the terminate. So now we don't know. Now it's going to continue the conversation because it's not looking because it's still looking for a terminate message. And then the chief marketing officer finally comes to terminate. And they're the ones that actually terminate the conversation now. That's interesting. I think that's uh, I think that's pretty interesting. So I think that's a pretty interesting update. Let me know what you think are maybe the use cases of being able to resume a group chat and potentially extending the group chat after it terminated, which is what we just talked about. Okay, so for the next one, we have compressing text with LLM Lingua. And what this is, is a tool designed to compress prompts effectively enhancing the efficiency and cost effectiveness of LLM operations. Okay, in this first example, we have compressing their re the Autogen's research paper using uh, using this library, they're using this text compression. And so what we have here, just go through this real quick. So we have the, the archive link for the paper. This right here, this extract text from PDF just basically returns the text within the PDF. So we come down here, you know, we have the PDF text, we instantiate LLM Lingua, we also instantiate the text compressor for a text message compressor object to be LLM, ling LLM Lingua. And now we say we want to apply the text compressor from LLM Lingua to the PDF text that we extracted. And then we print, um, we print the logs. And what this is saying is that we've saved almost 20,000 tokens, right? So what this is going to do is going to save like the window. Now I know that models, you know, what Gemini 1.5 just had, what, 1 million is, or is that the one with 2 million context window, right? So it's not like the end of last year when I first started this, I remember that, um, GPT 3.5, you know, we were worried about uh, 4,000 tokens, right? And we were always constantly trying to figure out how um how we can fit more tokens inside of that and what we can remember how do we preserve conversations through long-term memory so i understand that that's not as much of an issue as it was then but there are still good models out there that maybe don't have a great deal of context window just yet and so you still want to save you still want to save um tokens if you can so that you can have more in your context window because maybe you need to give it um, maybe you need to give more context that is like, you know, say 50,000 tokens, right? But maybe the model only holds 32,000 that you want to use for your use case. So something like this can real, still really help you out. Okay. So that was a quick example. Now, how do we actually integrate this with an Autogen agent? So all of this, you know, all of this is the same setup and now, and now we want to add the contact handling to the researcher agent right up here. Right. And so this transform messages with a text compressor that's um that's what allows us to use LLM, ling llm lingua with uh with this agent so we just basically uh want to research this paper include the important information and then you know we add the context with the whole pdf 
right? And we don't, and we're gonna let the text compressor handle all of this. So the result, you know, we just wanna initiate the chat, uh, the user initiate the chat with the researcher right here. And then we print, um, we print the chat history. Well, it's saying that almost 20,000 tokens were saved and you know it still describes the paper and gives the key components right so it's going to help with the saving the cost on the tokens per you know whatever million that um you see if you're using open ai right how much they cost so you're still going to save with that and the context window for whatever model you're using and then this last example they just give you ways on how you can modify see they instantiate the text message compressor they specifically say it's LLM lingua, which it will, I think it is by default, probably. Um, and you can just modify some of the parameters for this. And just one thing, one thing I want to note now before I get into my next one, because I'm not going to go over all these is they really, I mean, it seems like they really are supporting if you're a, a .NET developer. I mean, look at how many dot, uh, look how many .NET updates there were, right? These are all like the commits, but I mean, there's uh, there's a good many, even though some of them might just be read read me read me sections, right? It's not all these aren't probably all code changes. I haven't like gone through them, so I mean I could be wrong about that. Uh, like here's with .NET here, add Olama sample. So those of you who are wondering um, if you can get Olama working locally with .NET, here you go. They are working on it and making it happen. And just as a side note, in their gallery also. They have some other, you know, they update this. So if, you, if you're curious about how, like, maybe coding something or how something works that other people have worked on, and it may give you uh, some insight or inspiration to develop something similar, just come here. They've updated this, right? So here's a crypto transactions agent. Here's a virtual focus group. Eight, um, you know, this is an application developed. It's like a group of agents with Streamlit, I believe. So check that out. And look, somebody here has created an autogen robot. That's pretty cool, right? So just come here and make sure you check this out. And the last one I'm going to talk about is an integration with Databricks. And I think that, you know, if, if those of you have used Langchain, one of the nice things about Langchain, um, I, they actually have just updated their documentation, which is better, but their documentation was lacking because they have all of these integrations, right? But you know, things right now in the AI world are constantly being updated. So some of them were maybe deprecated and not quite working like the documentation was saying. So it can kind of make it frustrating to use, but they do have a lot of ways to make the integration simpler. And one thing that I'm working on, and I actually have a video coming out, is um, having using Autogen and integrating other services such as the well, next one will be Airtable, which is an online database, among other things. Um, and then also like a Wikipedia search, but you can do a lot more with it than what Langchain does. But in this update, we have a Databricks integration. So in 2024, they released uh, DBRX, just I guess how you would maybe spell Databricks, um, a general purpose LLM that sets new standards for open LLMs. They, they have open source models on Hugging Face, so you can check those out here. And what they have here is examples of integrating Databricks with Autogen. So basically if we just, let's just scroll down here a little bit. Um, so we get the, the first of the setup, right? So for any integration, right, you're gonna have to have the, the, the setup. So if you go to, they give you examples of um, different ways you can set it up with your AWS workspace, Azure workspace, or just straight from Databricks host. Um, you have to get, uh, I guess, an API token, and then you can just set that up here, right? So after you probably take a couple minutes, a couple minutes to set that up, they give you the hello world example, which is, you know, import. Look, this is this is about as basic as you can get with an Autogen example, right? So we have an assistant agent, a user proxy agent, and then they just initiate the chat, right? So this isn't like, you know, this this isn't like something groundbreaking, but you know, Databricks has really grown, and I think I like the idea that we're starting the algorithm is starting to integrate more things with itself, and it's really going to open up more possibilities, right? Because I think one of the things that people are kind of having trouble with, or just from kind of what I guess I'm understanding in my comments section is, you know, if I want to do this with Autogen, how do I do that, right? It can be something as simple as, you know, um, reading a PDF and adding its context into whatever you want to ask the agent about with that, right? And so being able to introduce other uh, models or other companies and use their models in here is amazing. You know, and then they have a coding, a simple coding agent. So, you know, they come down here and they just have um, examples from the Databricks assistant agent. 
and you know just come here and you can try this out for yourself right so pretty cool that that they add this in um so that there are other integrations that we can try with autogen okay i hope you were excited about this update as much as i was you know it's just always nice that you know more tools and more things are being involved with uh, with this autogen framework because the thing is you know not everybody wants to maybe run open ai right maybe somebody wants to try uh, different types of models or just run things locally or maybe you don't want to run things locally right maybe you you like open ai's assistant api and that's what you want to use well now they're integrating more with autogen so you can do that the idea is that this framework is opening up for more people to try what you like thank you for watching and i have a beginner course right here for autogen that you can understand and get a better grasp of what it is before you try these updates thank you for watching i'll see you next video